Hello, this is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Christian Prophetic News. Click subscribe, click the bell, you'll be notified for the next video study, news, and ministry. If you wish to view this video in full horizontal HD, go clear to the top of your cell phone. Click on the three dots, not the three dots running down, but the three dots running horizontally. The very top, click on those. Go into your phone. You will look down and you will see open or view in browser. Click on that, then go back to the video. Click on the little square at the bottom of the video, the little white one, and you will see this in HD view. Hello, this is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Christian Prophetic News. Welcome. This is week three of this series for You and Him Ministries Christian Prophetic News. Those who have seen the first two, I hope that you enjoyed those, and hopefully this one will turn out better than the first two. Please enjoy the first clip. We're making a little bit of fun of Jen Psaki uh, answering Peter Ducey. I mean no offense, but I it tickled me, and it's kind of funny. If you're offended, please forgive me. So let's, uh, my information on how you can get a hold of me will be at the very end of the news. But let's get with it right now. Please, please enjoy. Inside DC restaurants, yet President Biden and the First Lady were not wearing masks while walking around a DC restaurant on Saturday. Why? Well, I think what we are referring to is a photo of them walking out of a restaurant after they they had eaten, masks in hand, where they had not yet put them back on yet. But I don't think we should lose miss lose the forest through the trees here. And that our objective here is to get more people vaccinated, and you know, not overly focus on moments in time that don't reflect overarching policy. It was not just exiting the restaurant, though. He was walking through I the think I just addressed it here. With no mask on. I just addressed it. I was curious I just why addressed the president it. was I think doing. I just addressed it here. Okay. Uh, why the president... Okay. <laughs> well, even though that's a funny cartoon, I have to tell you, it's not funny. This person... Uh, Jen Saki, you might also want to look at Rob Carlson's Hot Saki, but it hasn't come on yet, and we're doing this on Friday night, so I may go ahead and post something of his on next week's wrap up, unless I can find something before this goes into the hop. Okay, I hope everyone is in good spirits this weekend. Second thing on the agenda is I'll go ahead and play this for you. Okay, now I'm going to show you a picture of a QR, a QR scanning and then I'm going to tell you my story because I also witnessed something. Oh my God! 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 There's evidence, boys. <laughs> Okay, so I'm stopping this share. And I'm coming back to me. 
if I can get it. There we go. <coughs> Still fighting with this Zoom on how to do it. So I went to get my hair done today because we've seen this, uh, this video of the QR code and uh where they're scanning it and they're telling us not telling us it's not the truth so i went to get my hair done today do you like it good <laughs> and uh, my hairdresser uh suddenly had changed her uh schedule when she's doing people's hair and uh so she had to change babysitters and so i said well who's taking care of the baby today and she said oh my mother-in-law and i said oh really and she said oh my mother-in-law has to go get an mri so she may have a problem uh having somebody uh, take care of the baby whenever that's scheduled and i said well why is she having an mri she said well she took the injection the mandate because of work and 15 minutes after she uh, had that she suddenly uh, had tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears. She suddenly, her eyesight started going and something else happened to her. Nothing, she hadn't had any of these things before this happened. So uh, she had to arrange to go to a doctor, which she has done. And so she has to have an MRI. Now, my girlfriend, in Germany, she swears up and down that uh, the mandate didn't cause tinnitus. However, we have it all over the place that tinnitus is one of the symptoms uh, uh, of what happens after this. Then my hairdresser says, well, she said uh, her mother uh, went and got it because she didn't want to lose her job so she said well just for fun let me take a magnet the woman was wearing her coat and my hairdresser who is i i consider her a friend in the lord now because she's gradually coming to know the lord i've uh, been able to witness to her pretty heavily over the years the magnet stuck with the woman's coat on what does that tell us something is going on i said well which one of the injections did she take and uh it's the one that starts with uh j or no no i'm wrong about that i think it was the one that starts with p but uh, the mother-in-law with j and suddenly she had three symptoms and is becoming ill 15 minutes after the man david um thing we're not allowed to talk about we're not allowed to talk about this folks why aren't we allowed to oh and then uh something else that we need to be aware of and i wrote it down in my note let me uh, pull this up because i now i'm taking notes you may have taken it and not know it the doctors may think they are doing you a favor and by that what I am saying is, if you have any tooth implants in the future, depending on how the government controls any kind of healthcare workers, or you need knee replacement or hip replacement therapy, or you're having pain and the steroids that they're giving you are not helping you, then if they want to stick a needle into that site remember what somebody said they saw in a vision and it was a blinking little blinking red thing on the end so small that it would fit on the end not the head of the pin but the point of a pin that's pretty small and they saw this thing blinking the other word that uh, this person used was the word culling. And that means that the weakest in a herd of cattle 
will be cold because they're eating food that the strong need to eat. If you get my drift, and I'm not going to go very far with this, <clears throat> but I get a witness in my spirit. But this is not just in the United States. This is everywhere. So the next thing on our list is this. So okay, this is this whole thing here. America's uh, law firm to find out that the EEOC and most state departments of hiring and employment in the states have said that it, it is entirely legal for an employer to mandate vaccination as a condition of employment. Now, the employer must offer to consider accommodations for religious and medical exemptions, but they don't actually have to accommodate it if doing so would create more than a de minimis hardship for the employer. Now, I don't agree with this law, just to be very clear, but that is the current state of the law. And it is strange because at the same time, the same employment laws prevent me as an employer from asking people about their intention to get pregnant or even their fertility status or uh, their HIV status or any of a host of other medical conditions or choices or preferences that people may have. And so this is really an incongruous type of a requirement. And I hope that when Republicans get around to being able to make the laws again, they really reconsider this deference and worship to corporations that is destroying the livelihoods of many Americans today. Deference toward and worship of corporations. That First, I must tell you that this is like disturbing. that turns out to be inadequate. Those are political terms. So they don't really capture what is essentially a theological phenomenon. Our leaders are doing things that previous civilizations permitted only their gods to do. Now, the Aztecs may have committed cannibalism and human sacrifice on a mass scale, but in their defense, they did it in the name of an all-powerful deity, Shepatotec. Our leaders don't even bother with the middleman. They have no gods. Our leaders issue edicts in their own name and then expect those edicts to be followed as commandments. The most recent example of this comes from the state of Pennsylvania and its Democratic governor, Tom Wolf. Now, Wolf is a reedy, balding man in his early 70s. If you look at him, you might think he's a retired middle school Spanish teacher or a greeter at Whole Foods. Nothing about Governor Tom Wolf screams Aztec war god. But beneath the cardigan sweater, that is exactly how Wolf sees himself. On Monday, the governor announced that he is now so powerful that he has the right to determine what his subjects say to one another during sex. The exact words Tom Wolf has written dialogue for other people's sex lives. And if they fail to read that dialogue precisely, they are guilty of a felony. It's a pretty amazing demand when you think about it. If you're over 30, you probably recall when liberals used to fret about politicians trying to get into our bedrooms. At the time, it seemed like kind of an overstatement, but not anymore. Tom Wolf is already in your bedroom. He just barged right in. He's staying right there at the dresser, watching. He plans to supervise every detail. On Twitter, Wolf explained that he intends to, quote, enact affirmative consent standards for all sexual activity that might take place on college campuses in the state of Pennsylvania. What does that look like? Wolf asked rhetorically, quote, we must move from no means no to yes means yes. Without an affirmative yes, it is sexual assault. In other words, read our script and we will charge you with rape. In case there's any doubt about what Wolf's law requires, the bill specifically notes that silence does not confer the right to, quote, engage in sexual activity. You're not allowed. So going forward, more than 700,000 people in the state of Pennsylvania will be legally required to talk during sex. Yes, is the word Governor Wolf wants to hear. Yes. But to be clear, not yes uttered in some breathy way with your eyes rolled back. No. Governor Wolf demands to hear yes spoken in a forthright declarative manner, as in a deposition. So how is the governor ever going to make sure that this actually happens? That's really the question. Laws without enforcement are mere suggestions. But Aztec war gods don't make suggestions. They issue decrees. So in order for Tom Wolf to verify that kids across Pennsylvania are using Tom Wolf approved language as they roll around naked in their dorm rooms at three in the morning, Tom Wolf is going to need to go farther than any governor ever has. He's going to need to see the tapes. 
in the name of public safety, mobile young college girls from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia are going to have to email their homemade naughty videos directly to Governor Wolf himself, most likely through his private Proton mail address, just to be certain that this important new law is being followed rigorously. Tom Wolf's a busy man. He's the governor. When you're in charge of the <laughs> intimate personal lives of an entire population, you don't have a lot of time left over. But in this case, Governor Wolf will make the time. Governor Wolf will watch these videos, every one of them. That's his duty. And in the age of Corona, it's also his right. We should let you know that we invited Governor Wolf onto the show tonight. We wanted to know which other sexual techniques, positions, or safe words he will be mandating in the coming weeks. And staff informed us that the governor was indisposed at the moment. He was locked in his private study, watching something intently on his iPhone. Pretty creepy. Let's know if we hear anything from Governor Wolf. <laughs> That is creepy. But the reason why I showed you that is here's the problem. What are we teaching our kids? Now, mostly what we he was talking about, if uh, we were to really think about this, let's make sure that I'm still recording. Yeah, um, uh, probably co-ed dorms, dormitories, where there's bed hopping or whatever else is going on. Uh, back in my day, uh, co-ed dorms, when I went to Kent State University, we didn't have co-ed dorms. They started that after I gra uh, graduated uh, from college. Um, so what are we teaching our kids? Uh, we're teaching them how to not get pregnant, but we're not teaching them abstinence. Shouldn't we be teaching them abstinence? It's hard to teach abstinence when daddy gives them or gives him his first condom or mommy gives her her first birth control pill. What you're saying to your child is, go ahead, but try not to get pregnant. But if you get pregnant, you know, you can go over here to Planned Parenthood. And some kids, interestingly enough, will have heard something in church or in Bible, uh, summer Bible camp or vacation Bible school, and something might have rung a bell, even though maybe daddy and mommy weren't in church with them. So they'll sneak off to Planned Parenthood because there may still be some shame left in the child. Not enough shame, not to have, but the girl, so what Tom Wolf is saying, if the girl isn't saying yes, and we're not talking, um, uh forget what the name of that movie is where the woman at the table says i'll have what she's having not that type of yes we're talking about she's consenting yes therefore if uh and she must if she says that uh she was uh raped or molested or whatever and she didn't give consent she must be able to hand over a video to Tom Wolf so he can examine it. What does this tell you us about Tom Wolf? I say creepy on a biscuit or a cracker. Creepy, creepy. Why is he the one watching them? Shouldn't that go to the DOJ or whoever it is? The justice, not the governor of the state, Seriously, folks. The, the next thing that I have on the agenda, I made a list. And so I'm going to go by the list, even though some new things may have happened this week. But these are the things that were important as I was walking through my week. And so let me go ahead and uh, share this. And this is the next thing. This is Jay Sekulow about the IRS. Okay, just for crazy. And then we're talking about the IRS. So, you know, talking about weaponizing the IRS, our friend Mike Pompeo was going to be with us later, by the way, said, 
that uh, Joe Biden wants to weaponize the IRS in order to spy on your bank account. We remember I, I was involved in that hearing just uh, about two weeks, two, about two weeks ago, I guess, that we had that hearing uh, on Capitol Hill with House Ways and Means Committee on this issue of, you know, any transactions in your account that equate to six hundred dollars, uh, the IRS can get information from your bank as to exactly what it was. Now, that sounds totally absurd because it is. This is without a warrant. This is without probable cause. This is with nothing. They could just say they just start looking at your account. Well, that hearing, which I mean, I said this to our team this morning, evidently got a lot more attention than we thought it did, Logan, I guess, uh, because now they're backpedaling. But their new proposal, frankly, is just as absurd. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, like I was getting text messages and calls last night from my friends who were just confused because how did it go from 600 to now the idea is 10,000? And what does that actually mean? Because it all is caught up in the nuance. Yeah, and it's there is no nuance. So here's what it is. Before it was a $600 transaction, that transaction itself could be subject to an IRS review with no probable cause, no warrant, no nothing. Then they said, well, because of the outcry, and we were, remember, on that in that testimony, I dealt with that. And like I said, it got a lot more attention than we thought it would. And they said, no, now we're going to increase it to 10000 But then we find out, Andy, it's not $10,000 in a one-time transaction, which is the old, if you put in cash or take out cash of $10,000, there was a report to the IRS. By the way, that $10,000 number was in 1970, the present value calculation of that ten thousand dollars now if it was keeping up with inflation would have been a seventy thousand dollar payment but now they're saying well it's ten thousand dollars so that's not like every account but it's cumulative it's not a one-time payment it's over the course of a year so that of course they can look at anything well absolutely they can and this is an invasion of privacy that is unheard of in my opinion in the annals of the internal revenue services already abusive uh, uh, misuse of power here you've got an agency which will add 87,000 agents if they're going to do this. That's the number that I heard. And what they will be doing is basically saying this. I have a contract between me and my bank with respect to my bank account. Without any probable cause, without any reasonable suspicion, without anything but the desire to, to snoop and to see what you're doing, they aggregate the amounts of transactions. And if it comes up with $10,000, they make the bank report it so they can snoop and see and spy on you. Yes. They have no business doing that, in my opinion. Harry, we know from personal experience representing the conservative groups what happens when the IRS has unchecked power. Absolutely. Dangerous, the most dangerous agency. So they can be unleashed without a warrant, without probable cause, to look at your data. So keep this in mind. The average family of four spends approximately $1,400 a month on food. That is $16,000 a year. That exceeds the $10,000 a year threshold that the IRS would receive under the legislation proposed by the Democrats. This means potentially that Susan Rice uh, AOC and Elizabeth Warren would have access to information about pause your income. Pause. This means that all of the old cabinet of Obama is in there doing this. This is no mystery. We've already talked about this. Susan Rice. And then we have this uh, Janet Ellen uh, Yellen, who is a millionaire. This is ridiculous. This is a problem. Anyone that is ignorant to not know that this is not Biden doing this. This is definitely Obama, uh, 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 Obama's third term. So we now call Biden, oh, Biden, the chief uh, the COVID in chief. Um, and your transactions, and this mm. empowers the IRS to have full blooded control over each and every transaction in your daily life. And bringing <laughs> Obama out, he had a cabinet meeting this week, which was abs an absolute disaster. <laughs> With 
forty percent of all products coming into the United States of America on the West Coast go through uh, Los Angeles and uh, and uh, uh, um, even at one point said, "Why am I here?" Oh, oh, where am reach. I? Thank you about that. With just in terms of inflation, because you had told uh, us at a town hall, I think it was in July, that the in, this was just near term inflation. The Wall Street Journal recently talks to like 67 uh, financial experts who said that they, they saw high inflation going all the way or deep into 2022. A gigantic disadvantage. Mr. President, the, so, the, the question was on the, the on community college, no, 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 which, which was a big campaign promise that, that you made. You talked about that a lot. Well, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to get it done. And if I don't, I'll be sleeping alone for a long time. <laughs> Do you have plans to visit the southern border? Uh, I've been there before, and I haven't. I mean, I know it well. I guess I should go down, but the but, but the whole point of it is, I haven't had a whole hell of a lot of time to get down. I've been spending time going around looking at the nine hundred billion dollars worth of damage done by uh, by hurricanes and floods and and weather and, tra and traveling around the world, but. Uh, I plan on now. My wife Jill has been down. She's been on both sides of the river. She's seen the circumstances there. She's looked into those places. You notice you're not seeing a lot of pictures of kids lying on top of one another with, uh, you know, with, 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 with uh, um, you know, uh, looks like tarps on top of them. Wages are actually up for those who are working because for the first time in a long time, employees are able to bargain. You're the boss. You want me to work for you? What are you going to pay me? How are you going to do it? I'm not being facetious. One of them he had recanted um, way back when he was a senator, where he said he had marched in Selma and he was all about, uh, you know, Martin Luther King. And then he had to walk it back and said, well, no, I actually wasn't physically in Selma, but I was for them, la, la, la. Then he made the statement uh, again, brought it back at the cabinet meet or the um, town hall meeting last night again that that's what he had done he was at selma and he was all in with it and this and that whatever the man is a pathological liar you just there must be a key in the back of him and you just wind it up and set him out like a little walking toy and his handlers Jill Biden should be ashamed of herself as well as anybody else who his handlers are because it looks to me prophetically, because this is the prophetic news. Prophetically, it looks like they walked him out to make a case that the American people can see that he has totally um, lost a grip on his mental faculties, and it's getting worse and worse. So there will be nothing else but to do a 25th amend amendment and put him in a wheelchair, put a blanket over his legs, have a man wheel him out and then have him wheeled out stage left and stage right will come in Kamala Harris who doesn't know what her name pronunciation is from one time to the next. It's either Kamala or Kamala or Kamala, whatever it is, is it even her real name? The other thing is the only jewelry, most of the time I ever see this woman wear is a, a neck full of pearls. 
what is she a sea monster coming up out of the sea and she's stealing pearls from oysters seriously and whose back is she riding on think about revelation 13 i believe it is just read it and come up with your own conclusions because i've heard from other people and there are prophets out there that are actually telling the truth that America doesn't want to hear. And the thing that they don't want to hear is America's not coming back. It's gone. Everybody can jump onto the Trump train all they want to. They can get on his social media. That's all fine. But this thing is not coming back. Kamala Harris is going to be the next president, whether we like it or not. And things are going to change dramatically in America. The only thing that is going to keep us going is the Lord Jesus Christ. That joy knowing of our blessed hope that at some point that trumpet is going to sound and he is taking the church out. Because what is going to happen to America may be the very same thing that happened to Atlantis. You know that Bermuda Circle thing down there where ships keep being pulled down? Very possibly that's where Atlantis is. So let's go on to the next share. So it is 1102 or 1103, depending on the clock. We need to adjust that again. Uh, October 21, 2021. Uh, by the way, I ha I heard someone say, you know, we're coming close to that October 31 that where people use the word Halloween. And I heard someone prophesy the other day, uh, someone that you don't know, but it's a person on my trust. And they said, when it comes to light soon, what happens on October 31 in a much more public way, I'm talking about in the next few months here, if not weeks. Uh, people will probably never want to celebrate Halloween again. So, you know, I understand we did it with our kids when they were young. We did a little bit of trick-or-treating, but we kind of pulled off from that because we realized the origin of that. So that, that season coming up is not a and season. this is one of the that. reasons why I'm against the trunk or treat. Over 365,000 children in 2020 went missing. And I don't know what the statistics are for uh, 2020. A lot of people don't know that All Saints Day, which is probably why they came up with Halloween on, on October 30th, when All Saints Day is really either that day or right that weekend or the 30th, of, um, uh, which is what we really should be celebrating, which is really all, all the godly people. It's not so much a Catholic thing, although it may have originated with that, but we are all the saints of God. So. Um, a quick thing about that, I was in France a number of years ago, and I shouldn't have been there alone. It was just too hard to do, but I was laying in the hotel. It was early in the morning, and next to me was a Catholic church, and the bells started going. I thought, why are the bells going crazy? And it was the, it was the 31st, and I realized it was All Saints Day, and the, and the Spirit of God, before I even realized what day it was, all of a sudden, I just this just, just power of the spirit just hit me a wave upon wave of the spirit and that's not how i normally feel things so it was very unusual and after feeling the spirit i realized that it was all saints day the bells tolling for that uh, caused the spirit so i know the holy spirit likes well, that I will day tell you reason. that uh, the holy spirit told me about halloween i don't know about all saints day but when we've got Halloween around that on the 31st, I went to a church and I put this in my other video. I went to a church last Sunday because our church is closed down and I have to find a church in the interim until the Lord gives me my next uh, marching orders. Uh, remind me, I want to remind myself here to uh, mention something. Uh, hold on here a minute. Good. Otherwise, I'm learning to take notes. It's a grocery list for the news. Anyway, 
I went to this church. I really uh, liked the church. I liked the pastor. But then they made the announcement. We're having trunk or treat. Please bring your candy in or if you want to donate a trunk, la, 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 la. It didn't hit me so bad because I was in the church service, but after I left and, and came home, a couple things started jagging because I trick-or-treated when I was a kid, but most of the churches, some of the churches will try to give the kids something to do, but this trunk-or-treat sounds just too much like trick-or-treat, and it's too much like Halloween. They could have something else that's that... Uh, uh, uh whatever or let the kids stay home and tell the parents to stop it uh like i said who's the kid and who's the adult but anyway i wrote a message to the pastor stating what i felt the lord was saying don't let the devil uh come into your church that way because that is a witch's and uh and uh evil spiritual uh a thing in the spiritual realm don't let's not be stupid or ignorant maybe we're just ignorant maybe we have just america has just gone so far that they're just totally ignorant even in the church because they want to be like the world and this is really devastating that we have come you cannot tell usually the church is not from the world we've got to entertain everybody like i said before everything's there on sunday morning in the big churches except for the alcohol um parents you need to keep an eye on your children we have to instill in them that there are bad people out there and we must protect them they are our valuable gift from the lord so my last word is keep them home let them watch a movie or whatever for halloween but keep them off the streets and if there's a church that is having this program you don't have to quit going to church that's just me but keep them away from the trunk and treat. I believe uh, you will be doing yourself a great favor. Happy glorious Wednesday, everyone. What a Wednesday it is, or was, because it's late. <laughs> so earlier this week, people really freaked out about China launching that nuclear capable hypersonic missile uh, it's an advance in weaponry that surprised u.s officials i know who knew that china would launch something harmful that ends up going around the world <laughs> probably should have been prepared for that apparently the long march rocket ended up missing its target by only 24 miles but it's just like getting up in the middle of the night to pee it's close enough to matter <laughs> But look, I think we're focusing on the wrong stuff. China may have just launched a hypersonic weapon, but we're killing them in so many other areas. Like, for example, they only have two pronouns. <laughs> we have 237. And, and, and despite launching a rocket, yeah, they have no diversity programs. Have you ever seen a picture of all of their astronauts? <laughs> they're, all, they're all Chinese. <laughs> There you clap for that racism. Meanwhile, we're really good at building non-binary bathrooms complete with private changing rooms. In case you feel like hitting the battlefield looking fun and flirty. We may lose the war, but we'll all be buried in Versace's fall collection. True, China's schools are so good, they turn out many of our top STEM college grads. But our schools are better because we've learned teaching math is racist. They're colonizing their neighboring countries, but we are decolonizing science, right? I don't know what that means. But don't get depressed. While China is busy trying to destroy us, we are too. You think China's got an edge on America? You haven't seen how America is doing against America. We are killing it, literally. 
that we are kicking our own ass. And we don't need your help, China. We already beat you to it. We have a black belt in self-destruction. Take this barely reported story. It's a big story. According to the New York Post, a fire that was started by a sailor slash arsonist that destroyed the massive Navy ship, the USS Von Home Richard. Don't correct me. <laughs> the ship last year was allowed to burn for days due to both individual and systemic failures. It was due to a crew that was, quote, inadequately prepared to battle the blaze. Yeah, inadequately prepared. You know, if only there was some water nearby to put out the fire. <laughs> a report finds that there were widespread lapses in training, coordination, communication, fire preparedness, equipment maintenance, and overall command and control. But other than that, everything ran great. <laughs> of course, how important really are those variables as long as you denounce white rage when communicating with the firefighters? After all, those long hoses represent the patriarchy that's been oppressing women for centuries. <laughs> So the Navy had to scrap the ship because it would have taken seven years and $3 billion to fix it. Of course, Trump weighed in and said he could do it in 10 months for under 10 grand if they agreed to rename the ship. It's almost believable. Somehow fixing this ship doesn't qualify as infrastructure, but free education for illegals does. So we can't put out a fire, but we did read up on anti-racism and white supremacy. We can't fight fires, but we can fire military academy members simply because they were appointed by Trump. Today, it seems that wokeism is the only thing that's blame retardant. Well, that in Biden's Spider-Man pajamas. <laughs> but it shows how we are beating China at beating ourselves. I wonder what the angry white male has to say. <laughs> You know, the way China's been acting lately, embarrassing us on the world stage, acting aggressively in the South China Sea, and then there's the virus. I call it the China virus, but I guess you're not supposed to do that. I keep thinking the United States is going to do something about it, but we keep trading with them and acting as if nothing's wrong. I guess it's because we're nice. Yeah, that's it. We're nice. That is... That hypersonic weapon only exposed the folly of our priorities. We are no longer competing with China as a superpower. We are dismantling the superpower that we once were. For every new standard uh, their weapons set, we lower a standard in our schools. We are our very own enemy now, and we don't even have to lift a weapon. We are the weapon. Because when our military and intelligence sees the typical American as a threat, China already won. Of course, we never made it hard for them. That country has the advantage of not having an academic media and entertainment establishment that works overtime to subvert their security. But that, I, I guess that's part of America being a free country. But why be so maliciously stupid about it? Just because we can destroy ourselves? Why should we destroy ourselves? That's something my primary care physician asks me every time he sees me shirtless. <laughs> China also does not produce social justice warriors whereas we become the world's assembly line of these fascist cretins. A nuclear weapon can destroy a city, but just one world warrior could destroy everything without blowback radiation. No wonder China embraces woke American companies. China gets paid by America while propping up a pernicious ideology that permanently craps all over America. It's like paying a hitman to shoot yourself. <laughs> Our companies embrace Black Lives Matter here while embracing slave labor there. And like the women's soccer team in Tokyo, America loses like the rubber dance. Because we ignore, we ignore the bigger, uglier problem while obsessing over problems that don't exist. Hey, Bob, what's up? Uh, I think there's something wrong with this foot. I don't know. What about that foot? This one? Ah! Oh, ah! Ah! Maybe a pedicure? <laughs> yes. So, as China reaches for the stars, and I don't mean LeBron James or John Cena, we reach for the anti-racist policy manual. It's sad. China gave us both COVID and Stockholm Syndrome. Perhaps okay. we should be quaking in our boots. I think that might be the last thing I have on my list. I'm sure there's much, much more. Okay, 
the, and if there's someone on here that has um, not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and you can see value in making him your Lord and Savior and with a sincere heart, actually what I want to do, let me see if I can bring it up. I have it. Uh, see if I can get it on my screen here. Let me do a stop share for a second here. I'm going to stop. Okay, so I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's one that I saw the other day and it's magnificent and it says everything that would make you understand what you are doing. So I'll go ahead and read it. Please repeat it after me and I will read it as slowly as possible. It's a prayer of salvation. Heavenly Father God, I come to you in the bent and broken posture of true repentance. I have realized that on my own, I am not able to live any perfect life before you. And I am sorry for that. I have grieved your Holy Spirit by my thoughts, words, and actions, Lord. I am not able to serve you as you require, not on my own. I ask your help today to be forgiven of all my sins and given a new lifeline in the person of your son, Jesus Christ. I have heard the words of your mouth, and I believe that there is no other worthy to be called God except you. Now with my heart, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and to purchase me from hell. And I confess with my mouth that he is the only Lord of all. So Heavenly Father, please accept my repentance today. Have mercy on me and favor me and accept me into your family. Wash my sins away with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me, O oh God, and baptize me with the fire of the Holy Spirit to remove every trace of my sinful past. I want to belong to you, to walk with you to know you as you already know me. I turn away right now from my old life and I renounce everything I used to do that was evil in your eyes. I ask for strength of the Holy Spirit to resist sin and temptation so that I don't return to my old life. I choose you, Jesus Christ, today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. I mean it from my heart and confess it with my mouth right now. Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, Congratulations, you are now entering into the family of God. I welcome you. And you will see down at the bottom of this screen, you will be able to uh, profess that you became a Christian tonight. Or you can go to youandhimministries.com and go all the way down into the chat section where you can list your telephone number or your email address or your mailing address, request a Bible, or you can ask for prayer or for any other help such as finding a biblically believing church. They will not all be perfect as I've told you about the one that is doing what I believe is wrong on Halloween, but we cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. We uh, will do the best we can, find the best we can, and as a new Christian, some things you will not even notice, some things you will, 
that let the Lord speak to you as he will on where you go and what you do. And as I said before, if you're disappointed in the church that you are going to, and you suddenly want to not tithe anymore, remember that the tithe is the Lord's and he will redirect it for you. Just listen for his voice. He will tell you. And I am Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries, Christian Prophetic News, the portion of You and Him Ministries that is news only. You can reach me, Pam Gunderson, in care of You and Him Ministries, 1018, that's 1018 East Wishkaw Street, Suite 213, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. My email address is pam at youinhim.info or pam at youinhimministries.com. I need to start checking spam because if uh, and I haven't been doing that. The Lord is alerting me right now that some of you may have already put an email in and I have not received it uh, because you've gone there and because I haven't answered you. So I apologize. I will go in and start searching after I get off of this Zoom call. My telephone number is 833-726-8255 or 833-PAM-TALK. We've done a lot of news tonight. I will uh, carve this up as best as I can to make it more uh, digestible. And uh, I wish you a very wonderful weekend. And this will go on Sunday through Monday. And then Tuesday, we'll go back into You and Him Ministries Bible study, which will start with Colossians two verse starting with verses eight through as far as we can get god bless you if you are saved go serve your king if you are an unbeliever that has just accepted the lord jesus christ be healed and delivered and if you are not have not accepted the lord tonight be saved then be healed then be delivered god bless you and you have a wonderful wonderful evening and weekend I pray that you find a church where you can assemble and worship the Lord in psalms, hymns, and listen to his word. In Jesus' blessed name.